Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to St. Mark's. My name is Edwin Weber. I'm one of the pastors here, and it is good to be together on this, the day that we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord. A few announcements for us today, because we are here, St. Mark's is doing ministry all year round. There are a couple of things, uh, though, there was no godly play today. There's no Alleluia choir just since it's Easter. We'll pick up with those things, though, in the coming weeks. Though Alleluia choir will not meet next week. We'll pick back up on the 14th. Actually, that's for both Alleluia choir and godly play. The women's group, Eat, Pray, Laugh, will meet this Tuesday at 7 p.m. in the conference room. We welcome you all. And also, next Sunday, we are having a new members and inquirers class. Should be a ton of fun, an opportunity. We uh, bring you here and we'll serve you dinner. So if you'd like to join us, give us an RSVP just so we can make sure we have enough food for everyone. And the nice thing is you can come and just learn more about St. Mark's or come and consider joining. Either way, we'd love to have you. We'd also love to point out that VBS is coming up. It's actually not terribly far away. Save the date. And if you have a young person who'd like to participate in that, you can go ahead and register. Again, information on the handout and in the bulletin today. If you and your family love to help out neighbors in need, there's a wonderful opportunity coming up later this month. Feed My Starving Children, we're going to have a mobile pack event. Um, That's going to be on Saturday, April 13th. And the fun thing is it's ages five and up, so it's a wonderful activity to do with your family. Uh, Again, more information in the worship folder. With that, I'd like to invite you to stand for our call to worship. This is the day that the Lord has made. The stone that the builders rejected. I shall not die, but live. Christ is risen.
add symbolism <laughs> for the Paschal candle to burn out on Easter. But the thing is, Christ is risen all the same. <laughs> but it's a sign it probably burned all last night for the Easter vigil. All the same, the grace of our risen Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you gave your only Son to suffer death on the cross for our redemption. And by his glorious resurrection, you delivered us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin, so that we may live with him forever in the joy of the resurrection. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading for this Easter Sunday is from Acts, the 10th chapter. Peter began to speak to the people. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day 
and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses, and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. Word of God, word of life. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome bought spices so they might go and anoint Jesus' body. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled away. And they entered the tomb and saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. 
So they went out and fled from the tomb for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Vivian Olson lived her last years in solitude. Her only son moved her into a nursing home near him, 70 miles away from the town she'd lived in her entire life. He did that when she turned 90. He came to the nursing home to see her once a week, Wednesdays, But he died suddenly in her 98th year, leaving her alone in that home, surrounded by strangers in a town that was not her own. I would occasionally drive those 70 miles to see Vivian. I would bring her the Eucharist and some news and cheer from her hometown and the church that she'd belonged to her entire life. The pattern of those visits was always the same. She would welcome me warmly. Then she would tell me a series of stories that were always exactly, exactly the same. It was like a script, told in the same order, with the same inflections, same nuances, same laughter, same tears. This was Vivian's routine. Mark tells us that the women came to the tomb of Jesus to do the routine. They were following a script, doing what was expected. Don't get me wrong, theirs was an honorable task, this business of attending to the dead. One would expect them to carry out those duties as they had done before, in the same order, with the same inflections, same nuances, same tears. I soon began to know Vivian's stories by heart. They were a script that I, too, now had memorized. It made those visits less interesting for me, but certainly no less valuable for her. That was our routine. Greeting, same stories, Eucharist, Goodbye. This went on for seven or eight years. The Easter story is an incredible story, but it is anything but routine. The women are met by a series of events that are both unexpected and troubling. They came to tend to the dead. But the dead one was not there. 
Mark reports that terror and amazement seized them. Plenty of reason to be terrified and afraid. One time, I came to see Vivian near the middle of the day. All the residents were gathered in the dining room for lunch, which was just concluding. I found Vivian in her wheelchair, just finishing up a Dixie cup of chocolate ice cream. And I suggested that since she was already there at the table, we just have our visit there this time. Fine with her. And then the most amazing thing happened. The stories I knew that I were, would hear were changed. Dramatically. There in her new universe of the dining room, she told an entirely different series of stories than any that I'd ever heard her tell before. It was as if her world shifted. She was in a new place a new universe. I learned things about Vivian that day that I never heard about before or since. The old had passed away. Everything had become new. Maybe it was because she was at the table. The women came to the tomb on that first Easter day, at least as Mark tells it, and they were obsessing over details. To adhere to the law, they had waited for the sun to come up. Then they fretted, who will roll the stone away? They were still living in the old world by its old habits and old routines. They had forgotten or were too grieved to remember that Jesus said that he would be raised from the dead. And let's cut him a break. They had good reason to be overwhelmed with old world evidence. They saw what they saw on the hill of Calvary. It is hard to argue with the reality of a brutal death. By which stories are we living? Are we stuck in the old world with its old stories? Or are we moving to the new universe that Easter offers us. My greatest fear is that we're living in some dull gray band of oblivion between those two worlds. We try the very best we can just to ignore the world around us and stay focused on our own little corner of the world and its problems and challenges. We do that so that we can muster enough strength to at least get out of bed in the morning and make it from one day to the next. It's as if our world, for all its splendor and sophistication, is little more than a small corner of a three-bed unit at the end of a nursing home hallway. We live in a way that is God-ish, but we have not yet made the leap into a way of life that is fully infused 
with the conviction that death is swallowed up. There is nothing left to fear. Christ is risen from the dead. Christ offers that new life to each of us as a free gift. Honestly, most days of our lives are mired in the insignificant details of whether this is the week to put out just the garbage or the garbage and the recycling. We fret about how many frequent flyer miles we have. We wonder... If I don't get this project done by the end of the work week, will I be replaced? We live in a world where there is so much static, so much overstimulation that we have become numb. Numb even to the news as startling as that of that youth in a white robe on the right side of the empty tomb of Jesus. The evangelist tells us that the first ones to see the empty tomb said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. They were doomed to live by the same set of old stories, told in the same order, with the same inflection, the same nuances, the same laughter, the same tears. But what about us? What about us? I think it's time to move to the dining. Come to the table, to the table of the risen Lord Jesus Christ. Come and learn to tell some new stories. The stories of this new age of the risen Jesus. Stories about the first day at early dawn. Stories of hope rather than despair. Freedom rather than bondage. Forgiveness where all we tend to see are the living and lingering consequences of our sins. There is life waiting, just waiting to be embraced. Life that carries us from the old world follows us to that dreaded grave, but beyond it. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Christ is risen indeed. This joyful Easter tide, away with sin and sorrow. Be unafraid to live the good news, to be the good news. Christ has brought us into the new and everlasting universe of Easter joy. Pull up a seat at the table and with your lives, tell the world the new, new story of God's eternal life. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit.
stand as you are able. Rejoice that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. Holy God, we pray for the body of Christ, the church, where the church is persecuted, protected, where the church is privileged, granted humility, where the church is fractured, heal it. Guide us all to embody Christ's love in the world. God of grace, Life-giving God, we pray for the earth, your good creation. Join our prayers with branches lifted in praise and roaring waters of new life, that together we may pray, proclaim Easter hope. God of grace, merciful God, we pray for all peoples and nations, free oppressed communities from occupation, exploitation, and abuse. Teach leaders your way of justice. Empower peacemakers and all who work to the end violence and strife. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Liberating God, we pray for pre people everywhere who long for good news. Roll away the stones that keep people from living with dignity and wholeness. Breathe new life and hope into people struggling to make it through each day. God of grace. Loving God, we pray for this community of faith, St. Mark's. We give thanks for Paul, who has suffered, served as our pastor these past months. <laughs> Bless him as he goes forth in your name. Guide us in our ministry as we discern where you are calling us now. God of grace. Eternal God, we remember those who have gone before us in death. Renew our trust in your promises that we live with joyful courage and compassion. God of grace. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrection and living Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us share signs of that peace with one another.
Let us pray. Risen one, you call us to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our true vine. Amen. The Lord be with you. to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter, and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. <laughs> God triune, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Over the eons, your ma merciful might evolved our home, a fragile tree of life. Here, by your wisdom, are both life and death, growth and decay, the nest and the hunt, sunshine and storm, darkness and light. Sustained by these wonders, we creatures of dust join in the ancient song. Here is Lord. O God triune, you took on our flesh in Jesus, our healer. In Christ, you bring life from death. We remember his cross. We laud his resurrection. Broken like bread, he enlivens our body. Outpoured like wine, he fills the earth with goodness. Receiving this mystery, we mortals sing our song. Here is Lord. Praise you for the heart of Jesus, so filled with your love for this earth, that on the night in which he was handed over, he took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given up for you. Do this to remember me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks and he gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this to remember me. Gathered around this table, we, your children, unite in this song. The earth is full of your glory. O God, triune, you created the world, you uphold the living. You embrace the dead. Send forth your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Strengthen us for our journey with this meal, the body and blood of Christ. Give us a future that trusts in you and cares for your earth, empowered by your promises. We rise from our deaths to proclaim you again. 
Amen and amen. Amen and amen. Lord, remember us in your reign and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial. Deliver us from evil. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. A few instructions for communion today we'll be receiving by intinction, which is just fancy church talk, where we're going to dip the wafer into the wine today. As you come forward, there'll be a small table with a gluten-free option if you need that. Otherwise, you can receive from Paul or myself the wafer. And then you may dip it into a glass of red wine or white grape juice before returning to your seat. And if you're extra hungry today and you pop that wafer in your mouth, we'll give you another to dip into the wine. (laughs) Because this is a meal of grace. And where God's grace is, there is more than enough for all. And that's why the most important thing here at St. Mark's is for you to know that all people are welcome at this feast of life and grace. And so it is with joy I say, come and feast on Christ himself. Come and feast on his very life. Amen.
Let us pray. Shepherding God, you have prepared a table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. The God of resurrection power, the Christ of unending joy, and the spirit of Easter hope bless you now and always. Amen. Amen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go in peace, rejoice, and be glad.